Dinosaur here, and today I'm going to be showing you how some of the more basic wire gates function. As you can see, I've got this wall with some of them here, and we're going to start over here with our logic gates. We've got three logic gates. Now, I find that the best way to describe how wire gates works is to make an analogy to if statements. So you see, in the case of this or any gate, it is if any of the inputs is greater than zero, then output one. All, all gates except arithmetic and all of the basic gates, it's easier to say that, all of the basic gates output a one when the correct the correct condition is met, which in this case is any input greater than zero. If I put on a five, it's a one. If I put on this one as well, still one. Even if the five is turned off, whatever, because any of them doesn't matter that the other inputs are zero. But if I put this one on, which is negative two, the output it remains at zero because negative two is not greater than zero, so therefore output of zero is generated. The next one we have here is an AND, which is works on the same principle as in any gate, except AND all gates have to have all the inputs greater than zero before they'll output a one. So if I put this one on, zero, put this one on, still zero, but if they're both on, then we get a 1. Next one I've got here is a NOT, which works the opposite to the other ones. This one is where input is NOT greater than 0. See, so right now I've got this button on, so it's already outputting a 1. And because 1 is greater than 0, the output is 0. But if I turn it off so that the input is not greater than zero, then we get a one. Those are my three logic gates, which all follow the if statement principle, as does a greater than. Greater than and other comparison gates all work on a a greater than b. So you have two inputs with these gates, A and B. And they'll output a 1 only when input A is greater than input B. I've got two here. This 8 is A, and 9 over here is B. Neither of them on, so it's 0 greater than 0, which is not true. So answer is 0. I put this on, so 8 greater than 0. That is right. So output is 1. But if I put 9 on this button on, 8 is not greater than 9, so therefore output is 0. Turn those off. And over here, the last ones on the wall, are my arithmetic gates. Which, unlike all of those ones, don't follow an if statement principle. They are just mathematical operations. See. If you have a look at the speech bubble here, it's just button plus button plus button. It just adds the output value. So 1 plus 3, that's 4, plus 2, 6, 5. Pretty simple, really. Same applies to the multiply gate, which is just button times button times button. Asterisk being the programming and otherwise simple notation of um, multiply. So if I put 1 on here, it's 1 times 0 times 0, which is 0 because we're multiplying by zeros. And so 3 still 0 because there's a 0 in the middle. Put this one on, all 3 on, it's 1 times 2 times 3, makes 6. Okay, now for some applications here. Now, I've got here this example of the greater than gate, where we have a ranger 
is a, the a input, and this constant value of 30 is the b. So the ranger is currently outputting distance. So when the distance measured by the ranger is greater than the value of 30, it will output its 1. So here distance is currently 13.354, so output is 0. If we take it up past 30, it goes to 1. 0, 1. Now, you can apply this to the outputs of these things to many things quite simply. You just have to wire something that functions on a one value, which is most wire entities, to the output. And then when I lift this up past 30, that turret will fire. Over here, I've got some more turret examples because we know everyone loves turrets. Of the other, the three logic gates I had there before. Here we have our not, which you know is inputting a one, so it's zero. But if we do that, whenever the output generated by any of these gates, which have the turrets connected to them, is one, the turret will fire. And this one over here is an OR. That was AND, by the way, that's AND. This is an OR, so if I press either of these buttons, which I don't have toggled for the sake of um, not destroying your speakers, is outputting a zero when either button is pressed. Now, over here I have a, a time gate. It's a timer under the time category, which I've connected up to this screen with time and active. it's I haven't shown you these, but they work on the same principle. They have the two inputs. My advanced wiring tool isn't running properly, so I can't actually show you them as easily as I could. So there's the reset, which I've connected to the reset button, and run connected to that button. So when the input from this button here Ah, not the console, and the input from this button, which is generates a one. Um, so when the one from the button goes into the run, it will start as such. And when it's zero, it stops. I reset it. So when the one value comes down into the reset input of the gate, it resets. And if this is running and you press reset, it just zeroes it. So what you really need to remember is just basically that most gates, if you just look at the little um, the little speech bubble thingy or the title of the actual gate, it's just when the inputs meet the condition described there. In the case of an OR, it's any if any of the inputs are greater than zero, which is the case in most, it's generally greater than zero. So if any uh, input is greater than zero, it will output a one. And most things run off an, an I.O. system, so just ones and zeros. That's really about all there is. You just have to remember. Look at the title. Well, that's all I have to say. So, good day.